see everybody. Tom Avery, one of the FLW steward and anglers. And I'm going to come up here today and I'm going to talk to y'all about the, uh, you've heard a lot about the Alabama rig lately. Well, I got one that's better than that. It's called the Yellow Hammer. Basically what it is, it's an unweighted, unweighted plastic head, five wires with super strong swivels. These right here are rated for 180 pounds that are twist locked onto that wire, a snap on it so that you can secure different jig heads on there that are going to be attached to different swim baits. I've got this one set up with little reaction innovation, uh, little skinny dippers. Uh, that's a swimming fluke right there. There's a lot of options. You can put fish grubs on it. You can fish big swim baits. It's, it's really a versatile way to fish. But basically what you're doing is, is you're replicating a school of bait fish. You have five arms that support a jig head. I like to throw mine on, this is 65 pound diamond braid. Any kind of braid is will work, but I would recommend if you're not using diamond braid, probably you want to throw 80 pound test. Mainly the purpose of throwing 80 pound test is because you're making long casts, if the fish hits it a long ways away, you're able to stick the hook into that fish. The second reason is because when you're, if you get hung on a tree or a rock pile down on the bottom, now you've got a real strong line and you can get this back. But the Yellow Hammer Rig, we focus on strength and, and trying to build a good quality product. They're made just right outside of Birmingham right here. Every one of them is made by hand from start to finish. I set mine up on a Powell 775. This is a flipping stick. A lot of guys would use this rod to flip the grass down at Lay Lake, Gunnersville. You know, it's a good flipping pitching rod. I like it because it's got a lot of backbone to it. You really load that rod up, and as you can see, uh, the, the brunt of the load is in that lower three-fourths of the rod. Not much tip. And that, that becomes important because this is a heavy setup. This particular one right here is one of the lighter ones that I throw, and it has five three-sixteenths jig heads on it. That's 15 sixteenths right at an ounce. In excess of an ounce when you add the swim base to it. I throw mine on a high-speed reel. This is a Shimano right here. It's a Conar, 6.3 to 1. You can throw it on a slower reel, but I prefer to throw it on a faster reel. I've got friends that throw it on a 7 to 1. But basically, targeting suspended fish is, is primarily what you're doing when you're throwing an umbrella reel. Basically, you're trying to determine what height the fish are at in the water column, and to do so, you know, I've got a ranger and I idle around and I've got hummingbird electronics and so I ride, idle around all over the lake and I'm trying to look and determine and distinguish where the best, most productive areas are. And to do that, it, it takes a little practice to become acquainted with your electronics and get good at interpreting what you see. Because a lot of people come up and ask me a lot of times, man, what is it that I'm looking at? I just can't find the fish. Well, you know, once you see it, once you understand what you're looking at on that hummingbird, then, then it becomes easier and easier to duplicate. But primarily you're looking for places where the bait fish are, are in transition. I mean, the bait fish uh, is, is the food source, and so the bass are always looking for food. Well, when the bait moves, the bass move with them. A lot of times they'll, they'll make, make their way back up into the creeks as the water cools and, and transition back out to the deeper main lake areas as it gets really cold. But you can set this rig up different ways. I mean, if I'm, when I go to the lake, I try to set it up two or three different ways where I've got a couple of half ounces on the bottom and on the top I may have three quarter ounces. Sometimes I'll take three, three eighths and put two or one eighths up at the top. And then other times for shallower water, I've got it like this with five, three sixteenths. But basically, after you've idled around and found those productive areas, you know, I've looked for the bait fish, I've looked for the fish, uh, look for standing timber, look for these key features that are going to hold the fish. Then it becomes important to understand how, what, what's the fall rate. And, and I can drop this out here to the land and it's going to drop really fast, but if I drop it in the water, it, it changes it up. It, it doesn't fall as fast. Well, if you watch this rig, a lot there, there are some rigs out there that have a metal weighted head. 
and, and they'll work, but the problem with that is, is if you watch it, 90% of the time they're falling downward like this, and your line's headed upward, and these swim baits are causing it to rotate, and then you begin pulling, and rather than pulling from the nose, it's actually going to pull from one of these wires. Um, but the way that this one is, is set up, it, it, it tends to fall kind of like a parachute, you know, I mean, it, it falls where it head up like that. And, and so the importance of that is it's not going to drive itself down behind a rock, down behind a stump and become hard to get. But one of the key things is, is you know, when you're throwing a spinner bait, you get up there and you can do a little roll cast with it and, and you're throwing it to a target. Well, this, I'm throwing it to a target zone. I mean, for instance, I may find a standing tree out there that's 50 feet in 50 feet of water and the top of it's in 20 feet. And so I know where that tree is based on a lineup that I create with other things in, that you can see. So when I make that cast, I count my bait down depending on how fast it falls to kind of come over the top of that piece of cover. But fishing it, when you're fishing this rig right here, basically, you, to, people ask me, how do you set it up? Well, imagine a dice that has a five on it. And, and you've got a, two dots up high, one in the middle, and two down low. This one features a little bit longer wire. That's, that's how most of the rigs are set up. And that tends to be the middle. But when you're casting it out there, one of the most important things is, you know, I was talking about making that target cast, that roll cast. I mean, it's hard to do this. That's a lot of weight, and you're putting a lot of pressure on your wrist, and you're not going to be able to do that all day. But I, I like to bring my rod back where it's parallel like this, and really step forward. And, and, and what you're doing is, is you're bringing that left hand in as you put that right arm forward, or vice versa, depending on which hand you are, but that's going to make that long, good, long cast, and you're going to be able to do it over and over and over all day long, if that's what you choose to do. Now, I don't throw this all day long. I mean, I do if they're biting it, but I basically go out there and try to fish the conditions, determine what's working best that day, what weight, what speed, what color. And one thing that's unique about this lure is you can make multiple color presentations on one cast and determine, hey, they're biting this one right here better. Now I can set my whole rig up that way. But when you, when you cast it out there, it, it, you, you want to know, how, it's very important to understand how fast it falls. I mean, what, how fast does it fall, bottom line? And, and so, for instance, if it's, if it's falling 20 feet in 10 seconds and the fish are holding at 10 feet, I'm, I'm seeing them on a hummingbird, well, then it's important to count it down five seconds to make sure that you're in that part of the water column. But when it enters the water, it's basically just a school. It looks just like a school of fish. And I mean, there's three of them on it. That's what looks like it from up here. It's kind of hard to tell, but multiple fish, you can catch multiple fish on this rig on one given cast. Pretty easy to use. I mean, you can do intermittent jerks with a reel to get that kind of that erratic action, that stop and go, that um, action that, that gets the fish's attention. But, you know, I'm not going to say fish won't go down to get this. I just prefer to fish it at the height that I feel is above the fish. So you can you can fish it a lot of different ways. On a windy day, it may be you may be more apt to putting a lot of speed to it. In warmer water, more speed. The trend of the water is, is declining, meaning get getting colder. Well, then I'm going to slow that retrieve down a little bit. I might drop it down to five one eight pounds. Downsize the bait. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real fun way to fish, and, and there's a lot of controversy around it right now. But I tell you what, when you're throwing this braided line, you absolutely, they hammer it. I mean, the hit is very, very hard, and, and that's, that's really a neat deal. A lot of fun. But it takes a lot of experiment to determine what it is that, what it is that makes them takes experience and, and a lot of trial and error to determine what's working best for that day. When you determine that, stick with it, hammer it, and, and you know, when I'm out there fishing, I try to fish as hard. I try to make it where I'm mentally fishing harder than everybody else out there. And, but 
But as you can see, I mean, this is a highly, highly effective technique. Um, it's not magical. You can't go out and throw it out into the middle of the lake and just go catch 25 pounds on it. I mean, there is, there's a lot of science that needs to go into it. I mean, a lot of guys can go out there and have good days and not really knowing where to go, where to throw it. But the more apt you are at, at experimenting and, and paying close attention to those electronics, the better you're gonna become at just fishing in general. And this is just a tool. I mean, it's a good one too. It's a great tool as far as catching fish. Um, so, you know, if y'all have any questions, come over here to the booth and, and I'll be more than glad to answer them. But I'm really excited to see that FLW at least has given it a chance for a year. They made that announcement a couple of days ago. So I know the Elite Series, they, they opted to ban it for the year. And, and hey, that's, that's, I mean, it just shows basically how, how good it is. It catches a lot of fish. But in FLW, we're going to get to give it a run and, and see what it truly does. So it'll be interesting to see this year. But uh, like I said, if y'all have any questions, just come over here to the booth. I'll be more than glad to answer them. And uh, enjoy the boat show. Thank y'all for y'all's time.